Warning, these football boots will get dirty as soon as you take them out of the box. Remove at your own risk. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on-feet video of the brand new Infinite Light Pack colorway of the New Balance Furon V5 Pro. All white boots that'll get dirty basically the second you step on the pitch. Which does mean yes, these will get dirty easily. So what we're going to do is take a closer look at the boots, talk tech specs and all the details that you should know about them, and also discuss why I think New Balance might be the brand to watch out for over the next couple of years. So if you want to learn everything there is to know about the Furon V5 Pro, including how they fit and feel on feet, please stick around, watch the entire video, and if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, they normally retail for $230, but New Balance has actually provided SR4U fans with a special price that you can see by clicking the first link down down below so if you're interested in a pair be sure to go ahead and check that out if you guys do end up enjoying this video and perhaps want to see more boot reviews from smaller brands don't forget to support this one with a like and if you're new here watching for the first time and don't want to miss out on daily content from me be sure to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live they're already slightly dirty so included with the boots is obviously the box but they do include a couple of extras as well an extra set of comfort insoles to go along with the lightweight ones already inside of the boots these ones featuring a really soft mesh lining material on top and they're made from a thicker layer of this ortholite foam actually pretty decent quality also included with the boots is a string bag that's actually a nicer material than the usual new balance string bags you can see it's white in color with the new balance football branding and kind of this light hand color it does have the strings at the top so you can secure what's inside the bag as well and overall the fact that they include a string bag at all is nice to get with any top end football boot so this gets a string bag rating of 7.98 out of 11.41.1 .1. now the new balance furon line as a whole doesn't have the greatest reputation furon one two and three can all be wiped from existence as far as i'm concerned furon four was a solid improvement and now that we're on the fifth generation i really feel like new balance has done their best job yet and they legitimately have a contender for a top end pair of speed boots but then there's two ways of looking at it it's a speed boot that fits great offers an incredible barefoot touch on the ball has really good traction as well and really does have this kind of sprinter spike feel to it but at the same time it could be a lot lighter. Not to say that they're heavy, but they're not as light as some of the main speed boots that it's currently competing against. But I would say that if you're a fan of a boot that has all the speed boot characteristics, but you don't necessarily need something that is extremely light, this is going to be not only one of the better options in terms of touch on the ball, I would say, but from a comfort standpoint, it's a really solid option, especially if you have wide feet, because while I have the regular fit version right here, they do also make this in wide feet. And that's really the reason why I think New Balance is the brand to look out for over the next couple of years because right now they have two lines of football boots where the top end models are legitimately that good. I definitely prefer the Tequila and right now I'd say the Tequila is in my top three rotation. I like the boots that much but both models are really that close to being some of the best options currently on the market and the fact that they're constantly improving with each new generation of New Balance football boots leads me to believe that they are going to be a legitimate contender in the football boot industry sooner rather than later. That's becoming my signature saying on this channel. So I guess we'll start with the colorway, which of course is part of the infinite light pack, which is basically a whiteout, but with a bit of a twist. Obviously the upper, the laces, the liner, pretty much everything you can see is white in color, but the New Balance logo on either side, as you can see, has this kind of multicolor, sparkly kind of color changing effect to it, which looks really, really cool. It blends blends in but it's a very subtle bit of accent that I quite like the look of and then the sole plate which I believe is a wearable finish although it didn't come with any kind of warning stickers either way it looks very cool it's got this kind of oil slick finish to it but it's basically like a bright white with some golds and purples and greens in there very fun to look at very cool as it moves through the light uh, and overall just a great looking pair of football boots a lot of people often ask me what my personal favorite colorway is and I can't say that there's really one in particular that I really like but in general given the choice 
I'm a big fan of white boots and I think whiteouts in particular always look really good. Obviously they get dirty very easily, but even dirty whiteout boots in my opinion still look pretty cool. Now the upper on the Furon V5 Pro I think is one of the more underrated uppers on the market right now. It is their Phantom Fit material, which is more so the base layer. That is the kind of grid pattern that you find throughout the entire upper, which is a base synthetic. Then you have a thin layer of mesh on top as an added layer of structure. And then you have what's called their Hydra Skin top layer, which is basically the TPU film that brings everything together. And what you end up with is an extremely thin, super soft and flexible synthetic material that is probably the closest thing outside of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 12 Pro to the Tajian synthetic that people love so much on the Vapor 10 and the Vapor 11. That's really what this upper reminds me a lot of. Something that New Balance has more or less made one of their signature design elements over the last couple of years is the slightly higher up lacing system where you're left with more kind of free surface area exposed across the top of the forefoot, which you might like, you might dislike. As far as the lacing system is concerned, it is a total of five lacing positions directly down the middle with no physical tongue. Instead, what you're gonna find filling in the central portion of the upper is basically a stretchy mesh material with a TPU top layer, basically to prevent it from over stretching. And that kind of fills in the central portion of the upper and then flows into the rear of the boot kind of creating this collar effect, if you will, a one piece enclosure without the upper truly being one piece, which is actually a nice design element, in my opinion, from a comfort standpoint. Moving to the rear, of course, it is a low cut boot, which I really feel like all speed boots should be low cut just for the sake of saving as much weight as possible. It's lined along the edges with this very soft mesh material that will admittedly get dirty very quickly on this particular colorway. And then as far as the heel liner is concerned, it's very bare bones, which I Again, I think is how a speed boot should be and that it's a smooth synthetic leather with minimal amounts of padding. So a little bit of a firmer feel at the heel, which does kind of give it to a certain extent, a bit of an old school speed boot vibe. The insoles are of course fully removable, this being the light model. If you want something a little bit more heavily padded, they do include the extra set inside of the box. It features the same mesh liner on top, but it's made from a much thinner, much lighter weight foam material. That's not as nice as the comfort ones, but if you're just after the lightest possible feel, these are the ones that you probably want to use. One design element that I find to be pretty distinctive about the Furon is the fact that it was modeled after a sprinter spike. And that really is the vibe that these have the second that you put them on, mainly in regards to the sole plate and the stud pattern, where it does have a stiffer than average feel, not to the point where they are too stiff, but it does have this little bit of kind of a bounce back sensation to a certain extent, kind of like a sprinter spike would have, which you might love, you might hate. Personally, I tend to prefer sole plates that are a little bit more flexible, so this isn't really my cup of tea, but I do know certain people that really like a slightly stiffer sole plate, and if that's you, you'll probably love the feel of this. The way that they've achieved that stiffness is with the combination of TPU plastic with nylon inlays that you would normally be able to see with the exposed patterns, but because of this sole plate finish on this colorway, you don't get to see any of that. There's even some windows normally, but again, that's all covered up. As far as the stud pattern is concerned, this is the FG layout, and it's very aggressive in terms of providing plenty of bite when kind of accelerating in a forward direction. You have these little spikes even at the tip of the toe that I'm not really sure do anything, all the studs being kind of triangular in shape. And then you have this kind of unique design with these short little studs at the base of the forefoot and the base of the heel with more of an unusual two stud layout under the heel to shave as much weight as possible and really kind of focus in on those two studs digging in, which is an interesting design element that we have seen from Nike in the past with the Mercurial Vapor 8 and the Vapor 9 that a lot of people were big fans of. Which brings us to the weight. And in a size 9.5 US, the Furon V5 Pro weighs in at 7.8 ounces, which is by no means heavy, but it isn't as light as some of its competitors like the Mercurial Vapor 12 Elite, like the Adidas X 18.1, even the Puma 1 19.1 is a little bit lighter, but they still feel very lightweight on feet, especially given that they have such a snug, secure fit that's also very responsive. It's not a heavy speed boot by any means, but if they were to make this boot slightly lighter, I realistically think that it would be a contender for the best speed boot on the market. So as you can see, I've swapped out the stock laces that are white in color, which is not that important, but it's the fact that they're these kind of ribbon style laces is that granted the quality is nice, but I've just never been a fan of how these look or felt. Either way, I've swapped them out 
for some junior length white reflective SR4U replacement laces, which obviously match the boots. They add the reflective bits, which I think look cool with the kind of iridescent finish that you have here. And the reason why I went with junior length is just because this has a very short lacing system and the stock laces aren't that long. The junior length ones are pretty much the exact same length as the stock ones. Either way, if you're interested in changing up the style of your boots in an inexpensive way, SR4U laces are a great way of doing that. So if you're interested in a pair for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. On feet, I think the Furons look really good, but they also feel really good, which is definitely the most important thing. Um, the upper is thin, it's flexible, it's soft. You definitely have a little bit more freedom in terms of movement of your foot through the forefoot area than a lot of speed boots would offer, mainly because the lacing system doesn't come down that far, which you might like or dislike. That's a personal preference thing, but lockdown overall, especially through the midfoot and heel area, I would say is very, very good. And the boots just have a very responsive, kind of springy feel to them, especially because of that stiffer sole plate and a stud pattern that really does seem to put you on your toes, which is a very, I guess, important characteristic for a pair of speed boots to have. As far as overall fit is concerned, it doesn't really have any extra dead space inside of the boot. I think they got the shape and the volume just right, and that is one of the improvements that they made coming from the previous generations of Furon. I think the shape is dead on. Um, and in terms of width, this being the regular width variation, they do make a wide fit version as well. There's definitely some decent width here, uh, but not to the point where they are overly wide by any means. They fit nice and snug, and honestly, I think will fit most people quite comfortably. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US, and the fit in the length is perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I'd strongly recommend going true size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, there's no doubt in my mind that the New Balance Furon V5 Pro is a capable top end speed boot, and it truly is one of the most underrated football boots on the market right now it has pretty much all of the speed boot characteristics that you could possibly want aside from the fact that it isn't as light as i think it should be but if you're after that barefoot feel that sprinter spike feel with aggressive traction and a very tight responsive sensation on feet you're getting all of that from the Furon V5. And like I talked about earlier, New Balance seems to be one of those brands that is constantly improving with every new model. I would like to see that improvement maybe be a little bit quicker than it has been, but given how good this is and how good the Tequila is right now, I'm very excited to see what the future of New Balance holds. Anyways, guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself at a special price, link down below in the description. Go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions regarding these boots at all, leave them down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.